Hi, in this video we are going to see the introduction to non-deterministic algorithms and approximation algorithms. So, normally there are two types of problems. The problems which can be solved in polynomial time and normally the polynomial time may be of smaller degree. Uh, for example, in the searching algorithms you are having order of log n or order of n and in the case of sorting we are getting order of n square for fit sort or mid sort order of n log n. And for matrix multiplications, if you are taking divide and conquer, it is taking order of n cube. Our size and multiplications will give order of n to the power 2.81. So, this is one category of problem. The other category is the problems which cannot be solved in polynomial time. If you are taking traveling salesman problem or 0 or 1 at set problem, the uh, complexity was complexity is given in the terms of uh, we go of n square to the power n. So, uh, the second category is non-polynomial time algorithms and the first category is polynomial time algorithm. So, uh, when you are taking this algorithm, again we are categorizing into two types. One is deterministic and another one is non-deterministic algorithm. In the deterministic algorithm, the result of every option is uniquely defined and in the case of non-deterministic algorithms, the outcome of every operation is not uniquely defined but is limited to a set of possibilities. Because uh, for the same input, we are not uh, very certain that we will give the, we will get the same output in the case of non-deterministic algorithms. Uh, so that is uh, that type of algorithms are normally intractable algorithms, and also we can tell that if they grow large, if the number of uh, instances or uh, number of um, inputs for the algorithm is getting large, we are unable to solve the problem in reasonable time. So, normally that uh, running time is normally represented in the form of polynomial time and uh, the worst case algorithm, uh, complexity of any algorithm may be in the terms of order of n square or n cube or n factorial or polynomial forms, you may have it as a smaller degree and in non-polynomial time we are getting in 2 to the power n, into the power n etc. So, in all these cases, um, some of the problems will give polynomial solutions, some of the problems will not give polynomial solutions. But what about the output? If the output is deterministic, then we are taking that under deterministic algorithm. If the output is a not a determined one, if you cannot determine the output means then it is known as non-deterministic algorithm. And um, if you are taking a non-deterministic algorithm, we can represent non-deterministic algorithm by three functions. One is choice of s and another one is failure and mm, success. Choice of s is we are going to apply random functions over the set s. And uh, in the cases of um, uh, failure, in the case if you get the uh, expected output, the success signals will be coming. And if you are not getting the expected output, the failure case, the failure signal will be, uh, that will be the output. So, the machine which is capable of executing a non-deterministic algorithm in this way is called non-deterministic machine. Let's see some examples for non-deterministic algorithm. We have already studied our search algorithms, linear search or binary search. In the linear search, the running time is order of n. In the case of binary search, uh, our running time is order of log n. But in this case, if you are taking this non-deterministic search algorithm, we are going to use some random function choice and uh, for the given array A uh, for to search an element X and for the n number of L, uh, for the n number of elements in an array first we are going to find apply random function choice which will generate the functions within the range of 1 to n and if that uh, take that position J and go to the array A if that uh, position element, uh, the particular j element in an array is equal to x, then we can uh, write that, we can get that output and the element is present and we can get the signal as success. Otherwise, um, you can write it as 0, it is failure case. So, here all the three function choice signals and failures are giving the running time of 1. So, the total running time is we go of 1. Okay, and in the case of uh, non-deterministic sorting algorithm, one more example for non-deterministic sorting algorithm. In here, we are taking an input array A and n number of elements in an array. First, we are initializing an output array which is 0 for all the positions of an array. And now, uh, we are going to uh, call the random function choice which will generate any one of the numbers from 1 to n. And we are taking that position element and we are uh, checking whether b of i is 0. Initially all are 0. So, in the first position 
we will keep that uh, b of j uh, b of j will be a of i right we are keeping that in that okay and we are going to repeat it uh, for and uh, every time we have to check um, after assigning this value we have to check whether the element what we are inserted now is greater than the previous element if it is greater than the previous element we can take it as a success one if the current element is uh, not greater than the previous element means then it is a failure so it will come out and if this if condition will be uh, will result a uh, failure one so uh, we will write um, we will repeat this function and um, this this, uh, this will come out of this loop let's take non deterministic sorting algorithm here the input is um, array a and number of elements n initially we are assigning one array b which is uh, zero for in all the positions and now we are uh, uh, taking a random function choice of 1 colon n and that will generate one number in the range of 1 to n that is j and here we are checking if b of i is 0 the first element b of i is 0 because we have initialized as 0 only now so b of 1 is 0 now now we are going to assign in the first position 0th position value will be assigned to jth position in an array uh, in, in your output array right uh, so you are repeating this process before going to check it we have to check whether whenever you are inserting an element we have to check and the previous element is we are repeating this process and uh, whenever you are inserting an element we are checking whether the element what you are inserting is greater than uh, the previous element in case if the element is not uh, a greater than or uh, if the element what you are inserting is not greater than the previous element the final output array will not be in a sorted order so that will lead to failure otherwise you can repeat start inserting the remaining elements and you can finish all the n element and finally you will uh, display the output array b. so that case you can succeed and you will get a sorted array okay. and uh, here as we are uh, picking each element one by one choice is having the go of one so totally n elements are taken out so the total element uh, total running time is big o of n just uh, remember that in quick sort the worst case complexity is a big o of n square and in the case of uh, merge sort we are getting big o of n log n but in the case of non-deterministic sorting we are getting big o of n only and another category of problems that is p and the np problems p problems or polynomial type problem is the same thing what we have discussed in the uh, first slide so uh, it is a class of decision problems uh, and that have a polynomial deterministic time and that can be solvable in a uh, big O of polynomial time where n is a P of n is a polynomial of n and here uh, uh, if the algorithm is deterministic and which is complete com computing always the correct answer and if it is uh, solving in a polynomial time then we can take that problem as a P type problem and in case if we cannot solve the problem in polynomial time using not a deterministic algorithm then we are going to try the same class of decision problem using non-deterministic algorithm in a non-deterministic machine and if it can solve that problem in the polynomial time range then we can take that algorithm as uh, the problem as the non-deterministic polynomial time algorithm or problems okay a non-deterministic computer is a parallel machine uh, it acts as a parallel machine that can freely span in an infinite number of processes and um, np complete problems so here in this uh, a problem that can be solved but not in big o of n power k for any constant k is known as np complete problem that means uh, a class of decision problems that are solvable in polynomial time using uh, deterministic algorithm but not in deterministic algorithm so uh, the class of problem that can be very favorable that means we can try to get it in a polynomial time using non-deterministic machine so there are three approach to get this mp complete problems so the first one is if the actual inputs are small normally the algorithm with the exponentiation running time may be perfectly satisfactory we will be okay with that if it is in its exponentiation output in the case of uh, some in some of the algorithms only the special case will lead to Solo, uh, it can be solved in polynomial time and uh, uh, for other cases it will not solve in polynomial time so that case is the second approach we can pick out all the special case only and the third one 
if we cannot solve the algorithm in a polynomial time, uh, we can try to find near optimal solution for the approximation of optim optimization problem if we are unable to find an optimal solution in a polynomial time. We can reduce the scope and we can try to find near optimal solutions. So that is either in the worst case or an average. In both the cases we can try to obtain. So this is known as approximation algorithm. So the third category is a approximation algorithm where we are trying to find optimal solution for optimization problem but it will not give the optimal solution but it will try to get the near optimal solution. This algorithm will lead to, uh, will give the running time of optimal polynomial time. Right? And here the goal is now we have to come closer as, po as, pos as uh, possible to the optimal value in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, this approximation algorithm is also called as heuristic algorithm and for traveling salesman problem we can take the short cycle instead of shorter cycle and the for vertex cover problem we can take few vertices in, instead of fewest vertices and in the approximation ratio algorithm we are going to take one factor that is approximation ratio that will try to figure the features of the algorithm. If a, a algorithm for a problem has an approximation ratio rho n for any input size n, if the um, ratio of the c, c is the solution of your approximation problem and c star is the optimal solution. The ratio of c by c star or c star, c star by uh, c. Uh, is lesser than or equal to rho of n means uh, then uh, we have to check it right either the maximum of this one any one of these should be less than or equal to rho of n okay so uh, that algorithm is normally known as the algorithm that achieves that approximation ratio is known as rho n approximation algorithm right for so in the case of uh, maximization or minimization problem let's take normally an optimization problem will uh, have the objective of either to maximize the profit or to minimize the cost right so in the case of minimization problem the optimal solution will give the least cost right so c star will be lesser when compared to the solution of approximation um, problem right so in the approximation algorithm will give the cost c which is normally greater than the optimal cost in the case of maximization problem the objective is to maximize the profit so normally optimize the optimal solution will give the maximum profit and the optimal solution uh, this approximation algorithm will give the uh, cost which is a um, profit which is normally lesser than c star okay so there are two types of approximation algorithm if you take an algorithm optimization problem and um, let it be p and a is an approximation algorithm i is an instance of uh, p right a set of instances for every instances you have to consider here we have to find what is the optimal value for that instance and what is the value approximation value generated by this approximation algorithm a right and uh, we can tell that algorithm as an absolute approximation if the difference of the cost obtained by optimal solution and the uh, approximation algorithm is always lesser than k where k is a constant for all for every instances we have to consider example planar planar graph coloring and another one is relative approximation in the case of relative approximation algorithm we have to find the ratio of um, optimal solution result and the approximation solution result a star i by i a of i or a of i by a star i in both the cases if that constant is um, if that uh, maximum value is lesser than k then it is known as relative approximation algorithm example vertex cover algorithm let's see one approximation scheme an algorithm is known as f of an approximate algorithm if it generates feasible solution if and only for every instance i of size n c star of i that is the optimal solution minus approximation approximation algorithm solution divided by optimal solution is less than or equal to function over n so it is assumed that this uh, optimal solution is always greater than zero and this is also known as epsilon approximate algorithm if this function f of n is approximately equivalent to 
epsilon for some constant epsilon and this approximation scheme is also known as is a, is a polynomial time approximation algorithm in if one only if for every fixed epsilon greater than 0 it has a polynomial uh, time computing uh, polynomial computing time that is the running time is uh, in, in the terms of uh, polynomial of the problem size and here we are going to see an algorithm for absolute approximation algorithm let's take 0 or 1 knapsack problem here number of item is 3 the maximum capacity of the knapsack is 20 the three items weights are 13 4 and 7 and the profits are 4 2 and 3 here uh, all the uh, we can get 2 to the power 3 solutions uh, some are infeasible some are feasible solutions out of all these solutions if we are getting the output as output as 1 comma 1 comma 1 then you will get the total weight as 13 plus 4 17 plus 7 24 which is greater than 20 so that will give the um, that will give the solution which is not feasible so let's take what is optimal optimal solution if you are getting 1 comma 0 comma 1 the weight will be 13 plus 7 and we have achieved the maximum capacity and if the approximation solution is uh, if the, uh, all the other feasible solutions are uh, all of the approximate solutions right and if you are taking one even solution 1 comma 1 comma 0 that is also a feasible solution its weight is 17 and but it is nearest to the optimal solution so here the optimal solution is 20 and this approximation algorithm solution is 17 that difference the optimal solution minus this uh, divided by this optimal solution is 20 minus 17 3 divided by 20 is 0.15 and it is less than 1 so here for this maximization, the maximization problem, we are taking this as an epsilon or one approximation solution uh, if uh, its difference is lesser than one for every instance of i. Let's take another. Let's take another example. Zero or one knapsack problem. Here number of item is two. Maximum capacity of the knapsack is three, and the two weights are two and three, and the profits are one and three. So the optimal solution is zero comma one. So, as the weight is 3, it will reach the maximum weight and the profit is 3. But if you are taking uh, 0, 0, it will not uh, fill the sack. And if you are it is uh, 1, 1, the total weight will be 5, which is greater than 3. So, that is infeasible solution. So, the let's take the approximate algorithm solution as 1, 0. Here, weight is 2. So, C star i is 3 and that is optimal solution. And this, uh, this one is 2. Right, the difference of it divided by optimal solution value is 1 by 3, which is 0.33. Here, m is 3, the w2 is 3, and p2 is 3. Let's uh, generalize this. If you are making this as r, then the solution will give r minus 2 by r. So, r is your um, optimal value, right? Optimal value is um, here we are taking it as r, right? The maximum value what you are getting is r, no? So, minus 2. 2 is the approximate algorithm's weight divided by r. So, uh, this is, uh, if you are increasing this r value and this r value, if you are increasing it, it will be getting reduced, right? So, it will not always produce a constant k value and we cannot give any assurance that it will give a, uh, it will give the same constant value, it will, it will satisfy this constraint, this condition. So, this is not an absolute uh, approximation algorithm. Thank you.